And praise the Lord, somebody. Come on now. Pastor told us we, we praise more louder for them Texans on yesterday, amen, for Deshaun Watson, amen, but we can give God some praise this morning, amen. 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 Happy New Year uh, to each and every one of y'all. Glad that everyone came out uh, for this first uh, Sunday uh, in the New Year, amen. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. And I tell you, I, I just want to preface this uh, message today uh, by saying uh, this is a new year, but there is nothing new under the sun. There, there is no new Jesus. The Bible says if they tell you he's over there in the fields, don't go, don't look for him. Amen. The Bible says as as far as the east is from the west, amen, you will see them, amen, just as the eagles gather around the carcass, you will know, amen, there is no new gospel, amen, if anybody preaches a new gospel, the Bible says that he is accursed, amen, amen, today's uh, scripture will be coming from uh, Matthew, book of Matthew, the 16th chapter. We'll be starting 13th verse. <clears throat> the message reads, when Jesus came into the region, a Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Who do men say that I am, the Son of Man am? And they said to him, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you Say that I am. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say that you, that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail. Verse 21 says, and from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, from the chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. This morning lesson entitled, A New Foundation. Amen. Please. Father God, we thank you, Father God. We bless your name, Father God. Father God, I ask you, Father God, don't use my words, Father God, but use your words, Father God. Use your holy word, Father God, to reach the people, to touch your people, Father God, so that your mission will go forward. In this new year, this new year of vision, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. This is it's very ironic that uh, this lesson, uh, this, this year, is called 2020. And the first Sunday of the year, I leave my glasses at home. <laughs> Come on now. Amen. But God was speaking with me 
and he, he was speaking to me and saying that we don't see the vision in the physical eye. Amen. The vision that God has for us, the path forward in your life is not through the physical eye. But God said, we're going we're gonna to make it through this. Amen. A brand new foundation. Amen. Uh, today's scripture, it presents a pivotal point for Peter and for the disciples. At this time, and prior to the point Jesus had allowed uh, the 12 to follow with him, to learn from him, to experience all of his teachings, uh, they were experiencing his powerful preaching and miraculous healing as they walked with Christ. These 12, they had experienced the famous uh, Sermon on the Mount. They were given uh, instructions on how to pray, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. This is what Jesus was teaching his disciples. Jesus even gave them the power over unclean spirits to drive out demons and to heal every disease and every sickness. Amen. There was much going on that the disciples had to absorb. They had to learn these things as they were walking uh, with Jesus. They had to learn these things. They were, they were not only among Jesus, they were amongst the multitudes of people that were following Jesus. Amen. Uh, we had the religious leaders. They were around. And he heard things from them. He heard things from these disciples. They heard from all different people. You know how you hear people talking all the time. And so you not only got to focus on the master, you have to know how to filter out things that we should not be hearing. There was much going on amongst these disciples. They were essentially in class. They were in the preparation stages. Jesus was preparing the ground for a new foundation. Amen. They, they were involved in mass feedings where they were feeding the community. Amen. The, the groups of people, they were feeding them. They even witnessed the extraordinary event where Jesus was walking on the water. And as part of all these different instances, they no doubt heard all the comments from the people, and they inserted thoughts into the minds of the disciples. And so even though, even the conversation of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all those religious leaders, they had to absorb all these comments and filter through what was right and what was wrong. Even, even it says, Jesus knowing these things, he knowing everything that the disciples had to endure, had to experience from what Jesus was teaching them and from what they were listening to from the world. So Jesus asked them this question. The first question he asked them, who do men say that the son of man is? Who do the people say that I am? Who do the, your co-workers say who I am? Who do your neighbors say who I am? Who is Jesus to the people amongst you? This is the question he asked the disciples. And I think it was a fairly easy question. It's like one of those easy questions that you had in school where maybe that the teacher asked you, what's the, can you name one of the three forms of matter? And it's always that smart kid. It's like, oh, oh, one's a solid. And then somebody else say, okay, but uh, uh, one's a liquid. And then Jimmy in the back, he's, he's snickering. He's like, one's a, one's a gas. You know, and so the questions were fairly easy. The disciples had been around the people, and they had been talking so frequently about who Jesus was. Jesus needed to establish a foundation. So he asked them a series of questions, and that first question was, who do men say that I am. And the disciples, just like kids in class, it's 12 of them. So they're like, ooh, I know this. I, I, I've heard the people saying it. Who, who do men say that I am? And somebody blurts out, John, John the Baptist. They, they, they've been calling you John the Baptist. 
They think you the new John the Baptist. He, and then somebody else say, oh, it was, you, they, they say that you're Elijah. And then somebody over there say, oh, you're one of the, the, the prophets. You're Jeremiah, or one, one of the other prophets. And he, he, and he asked the question, the second question, which is a bonus question. You know, you, you know in school you always had that bonus question, amen? So now you have a bonus question, and he asked this question, but who do you say that I am? And now it's kind of, it's kind of like crickets right now because nobody's raising their hand. Nobody is speaking up. Everybody had an answer when they asked, who do men say that I am? Who do you he, he said to him, blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Peter blurted that out. Peter, Peter used the first thought that came to his mind. Somebody say Peter had a thought. And it wasn't from man. It wasn't from flesh or blood. It was from God. And Peter didn't even realize that it was from God. He didn't even realize that Jesus had been preparing the ground for him long before that. God was about to create a new foundation starting with Peter. And it wasn't Peter himself. It was the declaration that Peter said. Peter said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Because they had been saying all types of things about Jesus prior to this time. He's a healer. He's a teacher. He's a prophet. He's all of these things. But who is he really? He is the savior of this world. You can give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. He is the savior of this world. And Jesus declared that Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. This came directly from God. We listened to a lot of things, but God had revealed some things to us that we know it wasn't from man. See, so, somebody can plant the seed. Somebody can minister, and somebody can go back and water it. You can get words from everywhere, but only God will give an increase. See, see, God put on your heart and your mind to come here this morning. Amen. You could have listened to the voice of God, or you could have not. And we know it was from God. And so, Jesus, he told him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, that flesh and blood had not revealed this to you. And then in verse 18, he started to establish a foundation. Jesus said, also, I say to you that you are Peter. He, he, he changed his name. He said, you are the rock. He said, I will, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus, you, he, he, Jesus said, you are the rock. He called them uh, Cephas in the Aramaic. The Greek word was Petros, where we get our English word, Peter. All of them, it, it is the rock. He said, you are the rock, and, and, and I will build my church upon this, and the gates of hell cannot prevail. The gates of hell are wide open, and people are walking through these gates every single day. People are making decisions and building up on a false foundation. The old Baptist preachers used to say the doors of the church are not, op not open. But the doors of the church should never be closed. Because you are the church. These four walls only represent a place where we congregate. You are the church and the, the, the doors of the church should always be open. Because Satan has the gates of Hades open. But I declare that the Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Jesus has been building up on the church for over 2,000 years. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. It has not prevailed. Only men lack thereof. 
And so he told them that, and then he goes down just a, a, a few scriptures down. He says, Jesus began to show the disciples. After he told Peter this, he began to show the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem. He must suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and that he, must, that he will be killed and raised on the third day. See, this is, this is, this is the, the time when we stop listening. P P Peter stopped listening at the time when, when he said that, hey, I must go to Jerusalem, and then his hearing started to fade. He said, I must suffer a few things from the elders and the, and the chief priests and the scribes. And, and Peter said, well, no, nah, oh, man, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not really trying to hear that. And he said, I must be killed. And that's the last thing he heard. Jesus said that I will be raised on the third day. But that, but that last part, it, it escaped Peter's memory. It, it didn't register. 22 says, Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. That rebuke means to strongly disagree. Peter's like, no, nah, Doc. No, 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 no. We we can go to Jerusalem, but we're not dealing with this persecution. Hey, Amen. We're not dealing with you being killed. And Peter still missed the last part of it. And I like the fact that it says that, that when God revealed this to me, that he said he pulled him to the side. He didn't say it outright in front of the disciples that, that, that we're not doing this. He pulled them to the side. You know how you pull somebody to the side? You don't want everybody to know. So you start to kind of whisper. And with a whisper, you can whisper a lie and people think it's true. You know that? If you start saying something in a low voice, I'm telling you, you, you know how the little dogs get their ears up when they hear a noise? I'm telling you, you start whispering. People start to automatically listen. You can whisper a lie to somebody. Come on. How many of y'all whispered and people got real close to you? Amen. We rebuke that whisper ministry in the name of Jesus. Hey, Pastor, say none of that cooler talk at work. We, we, we're not going to be whispering those things because it's of a God. We're going to declare it loud. We, 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 we're going we're gonna to yell to the rooftops. Amen. We're going to let. We're going to go to the mountaintops. We're going to let every ear hear. Amen. Amen. No, no whisper ministries in 2020. Amen. I, I, I don't see that. Amen. That, that, that's not in our vision. But uh, he told Peter, he turned to Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. You are an offense. Some translation says you are a hindrance. Amen. Amen. If, if we're not supporting God, if we're not supporting the, the pastor, if we're not supporting the, the man of God, the woman of God, and, and the leaders of the ministry, Jesus say, I am a hindrance. I am an offense. And why did Jesus say we are an offense if we're not supporting uh, the man of God and, and the teaching of God? He says, because you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. See, Peter was trying to preserve what was going on with him and the disciples. We walking with the disciples, doing healings, doing preaching. We feeding them fish and bread. Amen. It's, it, it's like a, a party every day. Amen. A lot of wonderful things are happening. And Peter's like, I don't want this to go away. And Jesus is saying, it's not about you. It is not about you. It is about the ministry going forth. Amen. And if you know anything about Peter, he learned from this. 
that foundation, he started building up on. He started building up on that foundation later in his ministry. So Peter did not stay the same. And we should not stay the same. 2020 ought to be something new. We ought to be looking to go further in 2020. Today we find ourselves five days into the new year. And we think of new things. It's a spring-like feeling, amen, but the flowers and the and the trees ain't throwing leaves, but it's a, it's a feeling of newness when we enter into the new year. And so as we enter into the new year, we think of new beginnings. We're, we're going to do some new things in the new year. We, we, we do what we often refer to as resolutions, amen? A new year's resolution. But oftentimes those new re- resolutions are simply intentions. We have New Year intentions. And, 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 and the reason they're intentions, it could, because if they're not completed, if they're not sustained, if they're not on a firm foundation, amen, they will crumble. Your foundation is a rock, not sand. We have to be on a firm foundation. We have these big plans and we start, some, some of us may extend, plan to expand our business or, or start a new business. I, I take my hat off to you. Move forward, but make sure it's on a foundation. Make sure it's on a new foundation or else you're just using your selfish intentions. You, you, you're like Peter. It's, it, it's all about me. God is saying, what is your purpose? How, how is this going to glorify me? How, how is this going to expand what we did in 2019? And how are we going to see it on this year? Different, different, different plans, different intentions. Praise the Lord. Some of us, we say we're going to eat differently. In 2020, some say, I'm, well, I'm going to give up that red meat. Doctor been talking to me. I'm going to stop eating this pork. Hey, Amen. Some, some, some say, well, my cholesterol been climbing, so I need to get rid of this fried food. Or some of us might say, I'm, I'm going to get rid of these sweets. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different for this year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create something brand new. I'm going to do me a new resolution. This year. But change, changing something in our lives often takes place at this time. Traditionally, things always take place within the new year. Why is that? Because the new year is a good reference point. Right? It's, a, it's the first day of the year. It's the first month. It's the first week. It just, it just makes sense to start it. On January 1. Some of us plan to stop drinking. Because we saw in 2019 that it really wasn't beneficial. And others just resolved to stop drinking or drink less. I don't know what your resolution is. But your resolution has to be on a a foundation. Some of us say we're going to stop smoking. I've been looking at that big white label on that pack of cigarettes for all these years. Surgeon General Warren, and I've been reading it over and over. I can't miss it because they keep making the letters bigger and bigger every year. They've been giving us warnings. But I've been looking the other way, and this year I say I, w- I want to stop smoking. I want to January the one. I want to I want to just resolve to stop doing this. I want to stop I want to resolve to to stop using drugs. I want to get myself clean. I've been relapsing over and over and over again every time I try to do it on my own. The influences come around. The freebies come around. Come on, you know. 
I, I, man, I say, man, I ain't smoking no more. John, John, come over there, man. You want to burn one? Come on, man. We need a firm foundation. Amen. We need a new foundation for this new year. We, we, we resolve to uh, create us a, a, a fitness routine. We say we're gonna, we want to shed some unwanted pounds. Amen. Amen. This is every, every, every year. Somebody wants to shed some unwanted pounds. I'm telling you something, it's countries where people have problems with getting food. And we have problems with shedding food. This this amazing country, I I, I know I'm right about it. I know I'm right about it. My my, my gut proves that I'm right about it. My my cup is always running over. But these things are very popular in the new year. We make we we also make uh, changes with our a uh, plan to make changes with our walk with God. We say we're gonna come to church every Sunday. We're gonna start it off right in the new year. We're gonna come out on Wednesdays, and we and we plan to do these things uh, to uh, strengthen our walk with God. And then we, we plan to uh, change those outward things. I plan to stop gossiping so much. Amen. I, 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 I said earlier, we're going to rebuke that whisper ministry. Say, so, so we, we're not going to gossip no more. Amen. We're going we're gonna to make a change. We're going to stop using that foul language. It ain't of God anyway. We're going to expand our vocabulary. I'm telling you, we're going to do something. When they cut us off in traffic, we ain't going to pull on the side of them like we know sign language and start giving them all those signals. We say we're going to do a different thing in 2020. I'm going to leave that old me behind. We're going to cut all this out of our daily conversations. New things. We, we, we're trying to do some new things for the new year. <clears throat> but as we monitor what comes out of us, we also resolve to monitor what comes in us. Yeah. Amen. I, I, we, we're going we're gonna to filter some of the things that comes through our mind, through the TV, through the music that we listen to. I know we say, oh, that ain't hurting nobody. Oh, I, I, you know, this the, is the, this the music I like. Hey, man, I, 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 hey, I, I, I wonder what would happen if, if, if Pastor listened to gangster rap all week long come on, come on. before his message, amen, <laughs> and Ben's watch on this series, Lucifer, and, 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 see, and, see how, and see how he be encouraged. And see what he delivered to his people. Because you don't expect that from the man of God. But it's all right for me. But I'm trying to do something different in the new year. I'm trying to bring something new, a, a new resolution. A lot of times we say it ain't hurting nobody. Amen. Some may resolve to. Eliminate any hint of pornography in our life. Amen. The statistics say that it's very popular. We, use, we do it on our mobile phones. Amen. And we can hide it very easily. It, it's statistics. Statistics tell us it's a high majority. We can say none of us have did it, but statistics tell different. And we want to eliminate the so-called uh, soft porn. Oh yeah. See, see, see. My wife, she used to read what they call love novels. But, but, hey, man, that that love get deep in those books. Hey, man, she had to cut that out. We, 
it, it seems that Hollywood cannot produce a decent movie. They produce a lot of really good movies, but they always have to insert a bare-chested woman, a bedroom scene. They, they, they insert all this in. It can be a really good movie. My wife told me, she's like, oh, watch this movie. This is a good series. And it was a really good movie. Watch the first episode. But they had to have some butts in the air. Amen? Just, just tell the truth. And, and, you, and you know what? When it's odd, you think you're watching a good movie and the kid's with you. And then, and, then one of the, and then one of those scenes come on. And then you look over at them and they like. They, they, they start putting their head down in the phone like they ain't see nothing. Yeah. Uh, you should, don't, don't look at that. This is the grown folk section right here. This, this is grown folks. So, 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 so we, we, we resolve to not look at those type of shows. That's what, so I, I, it might not be for you, but somebody in here has resolved. Somebody is dealing with this. Somebody has a struggle. These type of shows are a gay way to full-blown pornography. And many struggle with it. I, I'm telling you, it, it's pushed through the, the cable and the Netflix and the cell phones. All right, we're going to leave y'all alone. Leave y'all alone. <laughs> Amen. So, some said that they're going to resolve. I don't think y'all get quiet on me now. Some say they're going to resolve to no longer lift office supplies from the workplace. I ain't going to do it no more. If it ain't mine, I'm going to leave it alone. Because what, what, what we're essentially saying is, God, you cannot provide for me, so I got to lift it from the workplace. And God, they got more than what they need so, so you know my heart, so we're going to take a little bit extra here. But some say I'm going to resolve I ain't going to take nothing that don't belong to me, irrespective of the value. I'm not going to do it. This year I'm bringing forth a change in my life. I'm telling you, we, 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 man, we just barely entered into 2020. And all our resolutions, our plans, they starting to get a little shaky. Hey, man, we had, we had that fire in us on December 31st. Those walls start to fall down. Our plans start crumbling. Man, I said I was going to eat, right? I already ate six pieces of fried chicken. I, 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 was, I was so disciplined. I was so coherent when I made my plan. But now my, it seems like the walls are start to fall down. Things start to go into disorder. Only five days in, and my commitments are falling short. They're thinning out. I found that if we wait on a resolution in itself, we are already defeated. Come on, I'm trying to help somebody. You remember back in October, you started making those plans? You say right after Thanksgiving, I'm going to start getting myself right. Mid-December, I said, I'm going to control my finances a little better after I spent all that money on Christmas gifts. Say, I'm going to do a little bit better. But the fact that we waited on December, on January the 1, we didn't start making preparations for the new year. I'm telling you, we, we, we dwelled in our same situation until the firecracker started going off, until the lights started lighting up the sky. We were still in it. We was popping bottles on New Year's, talking about I was going to stop drinking. And we ushered in the New Year. I said I, w I, said I was going to mess with him if he won't put a ring on it, and I was booed up for the New Year. I, I, I had to bring in the New Year with a bang. I was burning trees in the New Year.
See, regardless, regardless if we make it five days into the year or five months into the year, if we don't have the right foundation, if, it, if it's not built on some solid, it becomes difficult to sustain our plan because we're doing it with us. Jesus is not in the preparation process. See, he couldn't build that foundation on Peter if he had not prepared him. If Jesus had not walked with Peter, he couldn't be that foundation that the church is built up on. We know from recent messages that, that pastors have been preaching that we need to prepare ourselves. If anything is going to be successful, we can't start it on January 1st. See, see this, this is how we enter into January 1. Happy New Year. I'm a changed person. That, that's how we go into it. We want to flip that switch. As soon as 11.59, we start counting down, and then we say, I'm a new person. But Jesus say, man, I'm going to prepare you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some godly principles. And so you, when you enter into that new you, you already know what the enemy is going to bring against you. You already know how to maintain yourself when you, when, when you get influenced by others. When you have those desires, you know how to respond. So that new you don't happen with the flick of a switch. Jesus was preparing Peter long before that. Before he revealed to him that God revealed to him that he was the Christ. He was going around. He, he had went to his house in Capernaum. He healed his mother-in-law. Jesus said, I'm preparing the way. I'm, I'm making a foundation. You, you, you ever see those companies come and lay a cement on the ground? They lay this big concrete slab. Y'all seen them. Anybody see what happened before that? They work the ground. They dig it up. They level it. They put some lime in there. They put this white powder in there. They, they do all these things. They, they have a guy out there look like he got a camera. He's, he's surveying the land. He's making sure everything is in place before they lay the foundation. Some work has to be done before you receive your new foundation. If you just throw that brick out there, you're going to throw it on some sand. I'm telling you, it's going to fall over. It's going to sink to the left. It's going to sink back. When somebody stand on it, they're going to trip. Jesus, he, he, he kept preparing them. He, you know, one of his preparations, Peter and I think it was John, they were, they were at uh, Lake Gennesaret. And they had been fishing all night. And the Bible says they didn't catch anything. They didn't catch not one fish. Let me, let me go to it real quick. He, he said they did not catch one fish from all night. And he said they were cleaning their nets. They, were, they was getting ready to take it in. And so here comes Jesus. The Bible said he was being pressed by the crowd. The people were pressing up against him to receive that word. They was hungry for the word. They wasn't running from the word. They wasn't running from the preacher. They was running to the word of God. They was pressing Jesus on either side. They was pressing Jesus so much that he jumped in one of the empty boats. He jumped in Peter's boat and said, Peter, push out a little bit so I can speak to the people. And as he started to preach to the people, how many of y'all know he was preaching to Peter? See, he was preaching to Peter in the third person. You ever been talking to somebody directly and you know somebody is listening and you continue to minister to them, but you also ministering to them. You know they got their ear, 
they looking for some ill candy. You, you know that eavesdropping. And so you continue to minister in front of you like Jesus did with the people. And Peter was right there to receive the message. Now, Peter didn't prepare himself to receive that message. Matter of fact, he wasn't even in the mood. He wasn't in the mood to receive that message. Let me, it was three things going on with Peter. He was tired. He was frustrated. Stop it. And he was reluctant. I, I, I know this is true. Like I say, he was tired because he had fished all night. How many of y'all been up all night? Uh, uh, better yet, how many of y'all worked a long day? And when you come home, they say, how you doing? He's like, I'm tired. He was tired. He had, he had worked on, this was his job. This was his profession. And not only was he tired, he was frustrated. How many fish he caught? Zero. He did not catch one fish. See, see they, they used to tell me, and I used to repeat it, that a bad day fishing is better than a good day at work. But when fishing is your work, you're having a really, really bad day. When fishing is your profession, you have a, you're having a bad day. You, you, you're frustrated. That, that means you spend the whole night and you didn't get nothing done. And he was reluctant. Do we know why he was reluctant? He had already started cleaning his nets. I'm telling you, you, you done shut down your computer at work. You done cleaned up your workstation. You done put, put up with all your tools. And the, and the boss say, man, we got something else for you to do. He's like, man, I can't believe this dude. Man, I already told the kids I was on my way home. I'm picking up some food. Now I got to call them back. Because now I got something else to do. He was, he was reluctant. Some of us don't even want to give somebody a ride after we wash our car. Be like, where you want to go? Man, how far is that? I just put all my, all of my tires, you know, all them potholes over there. What time you got to be there? We, we, we reluctant. So, so uh, Peter was reluctant. But I, but I love this. I love this account. He told Peter. He said, "Push out further into the deep, and cast your nets." And Peter, he really didn't want to do it. But Peter said, "I'm gonna go ahead and be obedient." He, he, <laughs> the, the word says that. Peter answered him and said, Master, we have toiled all night, and we ain't caught nothing. That was his response. So Jesus telling him to go out into the deep and cast your net. Man, I done been there and done that. He said, go ahead out there and cast your net into the deep. But Peter was obedient. Peter was obedient. That, 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 that's the thing. When God speaks to us, we have to be obedient. I, I know we have doubts. I have them. Sometimes I want to do me. I want to go home and lay down. Peter wanted to go home and lay down. He didn't want to go out into the deep again. He didn't want to work overtime. I ain't asked for no time and a half. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, put in my, I didn't put in my work. He told him to go out and he cast out into the deep, and, and, and he cast his nets out, and, and the nets were so full. This, I'm telling you, this was Peter's lump sum. You, you know, this was Peter's income tax. This was a big load. This was more fish that Peter had ever caught. He asked the signal to his boy, say, man, y'all come on with that other boat so we can help bring in this load because it was a lot of fish. And, and, and the Bible says that they filled up both of the boats, and they began to sink. Peter had never, keep that on your mind, Peter had never had a catch like this. 
the catch was so great, and it, it, it struck fear in Peter. One, because he doubted Jesus. He, he didn't want to do it. He went ahead and do it, did it. He did it reluctantly, but he went ahead and, and did it. And after, and, and after he caught, after the fish was caught, uh, Peter said, uh, he fell at Jesus' knees saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Well, what did he do? He know that, that he, den- he, he didn't really deny Christ like he did uh, uh, when he denied him three times, but he didn't really believe him. He just said, oh, I'm going to go ahead and win it. I don't want to be the reason it don't get done. You know, sometimes in church we come to events because I don't want to be the one that don't show up. I'm all right. I'm going to leave y'all alone. Uh, I'm going to leave y'all alone. He, he, he said, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. And, and, and the thing is, uh, he had fear in him. Uh, we know that because uh, down in, in verse 10, Jesus told him, he said, do not be afraid. From now on, I will make you fishers of men. You're going to catch men. You see this, 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 this big uh, load of fish you just caught? The biggest catch you ever had? We're going to catch multitudes of people. Yeah. By the person that, yeah, yeah, give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> by, 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 by the people that we minister to, yeah. and then they minister to, yeah. and then they minister to, yeah. and then they minister to. Yeah. And then, see, Peter's message is still going on. Peter preached to the church, and it went down, and it went down, and it went down, and down. Some generation after generation, God is still building up on that rock. That's the only way we get new converts, because of the rock, that declaration of Peter. Now, one, 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 one little nugget I always wondered, the Bible say. When he brought in that big load of fish, two boat loads, it was sinking. He said they left everything, the boats, the fish, and followed him. And I was like, what happened to the fish? <laughs> See, you remember there was crowds pressing up against Jesus. See, that was a multitude of people there. They didn't have to worry about taking the fish to the market. They didn't have to worry about selling the fish, giving it away. All they did was show it up and say, hey, y'all go at it. We finna follow Jesus. They had to change their focus. Jesus was preparing the foundation. There was some preparation. So, so give me that first point, and I'm going to get out of y'all way. Preparation. So what does your foundation look like? What have you say, well, I'm, this is what I'm going to establish in the new year. Jesus should be that foundation. Scripture showed us that Peter identified Jesus as the Messiah, and this was the rock upon which the church was built. So if it was Peter's foundation, it should be our foundation. Jesus should be our foundation. So we we don't have to look no further to establish uh, different plans, but we need to put Christ first in our life. See what the word of God says about it. I guarantee you God has a word for you. Whatever it's, it's for your business, your your addiction you you're dealing with, whatever whatever it is, God has a word for you, and He has a plan for you. But He wants you to establish it on Him. He, he don't want you to do it on your own, and He don't tell you to don't do it. You still move forward, but you put Jesus at the forefront. You talk to Jesus in the morning about it. You talk to Jesus through your day about it. You talk to him at night about it. I'm telling you, you talk to him all the time. You find yourself talking in your sleep. I'm telling you. So, we have to look to Christ for this foundation. Ask yourself what the word of God says about my situation, what I'm dealing with, and he's going to point you to the right decision. You, you, you're going you're gonna to set a foundation on godly principles, and he's going to direct your path. And as your foundation is being built, just know that God, he's going to apply the mortar. He's going to reply all those things. And, and this is how you get those in-betweens. You have to 
be fasting. You have to be praying. You have to be reading. You have to be attending. I'm telling you, God is going to build it up. You're going to continue to build up that foundation. But you have to apply some things. Ah, he'll reveal it to you. Whether good or bad, he will reveal it to you. The first thing he revealed to Peter was this was good. This came from God. Flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. And later on, he said, get behind me, Satan. See, that wasn't of God. That was against God's plan. So whether good or bad, talk to God about it. He's going to reveal it. You know exactly if you don't supposed to be participating in it. We're going to make God the foundation of 2020, or we're going to repeat the resolutions next year. No, 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 no this, this, is, this, this is real. I've, I've repeated resolutions year after year. I don't know how many trees I done flushed down the toilet saying I ain't going to do that no more. I say I'm done with it. But until I established a foundation, it, it, it kept lurking at my door. It, it kept calling me. My, my boys kept coming over. You know, they, they kept giving me the stuff that I knew I didn't need. It wasn't beneficial to me. Wow. As your foundation is being built, God will support you. He will apply. He will utilize your prayers, your fasting, all these things to support your foundation that you have built upon Christ. And the key is to keep your eyes on Christ. There's going to be a lot of distractions. I, 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 I like Peter. I like Peter. You know, <clears throat> when Jesus was walking on the water, he Peter wanted to come out and join him. He said, Peter, come on. And we know the story. He was looking at Jesus, and he started looking at stuff around him. He started looking down, and he went down. But Jesus pulled him right back up. Don't, don't, don't focus on all those external chitter-chatter, all those things that oppose you. Keep your eyes on Jesus and move forward with your goals. If, 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 you, if you set some goals for 2020, put Jesus underneath it. Come on, you, 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 you ain't stacked those bricks too high. We're only five days in. You ain't, you ain't put those bricks too high. Knock those bricks down and put Jesus. Make, make Jesus that rock. Put him at the bottom and you can build up. Give my next point, application. Your foundation is only built upon uh, after you begin your walk with God. You can't start building a foundation with Christ until your salvation, until you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Then you become a new creature. And then you start to behave like a new creature. You, you start to walk and talk like a new creature. People ought to see some changes within you. If you were a Christian that was doing the same thing you was doing 10 years ago, you haven't applied yourself. Amen? I, I, I know of some struggles. I deal with many struggles. But we have to stand firm on his word. We have to apply ourselves. Make God the center of our life. You, you begin to apply those godly principles to your plan each day. Don't pray real hard to God on January 1st and on the 2nd we pray a little bit lighter and on the 3rd we just, you know, thank you God and that, that's, that's all we did for the 3rd. Amen. Acknowledge God. 
Make him the firm foundation every day, all through the day. And you're going to start to recognize ungodly habits. You're going to start to filter out those behaviors that are not of God while looking through a new lens. Somebody say 2020 vision. You, you're going to start looking through a, through a new lens. Anybody wear glasses? You got you a new pair. Just, everything looks so beautiful when you put on those glasses. When you put on Christ, you're going to see it, it, it's beauty, unimaginable beauty. And God is going to use you exactly the way you are. He, he's not going to use you the way he used Reverend Bryce. He's going to use your characteristics. He's going to use your behavior. He's going to use your background. So you can't, you can't witness to a, a drug addict if you ain't never had no drug problem. You can't relate to him with the problems. That, that, you know, there are some street walkers out there. The Bible say, as were some of you. So we can relate. There's some things that we used to do that we can help support these new converts. Let God use you. There's no point in having convictions about the old you. Once you came to salvation, that was deleted. You, you, you press delete on your keypad. That, that, that is behind you. You build up on it. The last point. Get out your fruits. And once your foundation is applied, once you apply yourself, you begin to bear fruit. I told you earlier, many of you, many people see you now differently than they saw you before. They see the love that you show. They see your responses to difficult situations because we don't respond like the world responds. We don't participate in the same activities that we used to participate. You say, hey, well, I ain't playing in the bachelor party, but I, I help you with the reception. You know, we, we, we're, not, we're not crossing those borders. We, 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 we set up some boundaries. We got to do things differently. People have to see our fruit. And if they see, you, could, you can declare amongst your family now. You can witness to your friends now. Because if you're doing two different things, the world going to see you as hypocritical. So we have to endure. We have to, to practice. Matter of fact, God sees you as hypocritical. Jesus said, woe unto the hypocrites. God said in, in, in Revelations, he said, I don't want you to be lukewarm. I, I don't want you with one leg over here and one leg over there. Make up your mind this day whom you're going to serve. Once you hear the word, the word should benefit you. You should be able to build on it and apply yourself, bearing fruit. This is the essence of bearing fruit. The foundation was established with Peter, but it lives on through the church today. And as, and, and, and as I close... I'm going to repeat what Jesus said to Peter. Who do people say that I am? Who is Jesus in your life? If Jesus is not the foundation of your life, then today is the day. Today is the day that you give Jesus your life. Today is the day that you confess that Jesus is your Lord, that you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. If you have not given your life to Christ, do not wait another day. Do not put this on next year's resolution. Give your life to Christ on today. Give your life to Christ. If there be one, 
who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, you can do so today. You can do so today. You can give your life to Jesus Christ. You can have a new foundation. Today can be the start of your new life. You know, the old has not been working because it was on shaky ground. It wasn't on a firm foundation. But if you want to have your life on a firm foundation, if you want to have eternal peace, if you want to have eternal life, then give your life.